let's get to this sound. So, as we talked about last week, the CIA, which just via, they were they were offended, they were shocked. How could you accuse us of spying on the United States Senate? You know, I understand we're not perfect. I understand we need to get a little bit dirty. But when you accuse us of a spying on a Senate committee, while that Senate committee is conducting an investigation into our torture regimen, or into our torture regime, I just, you know, the gall to accuse us of spying. You really ought to take a look in the mirror and ask yourself whether or not we're on the same side here. And then, of course, a couple couple months later, oh, yeah, you're right. You're sorry. Our bad. <laughs> we were spying on you. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so John Brennan, who was President Obama's nominee for head of the CIA, who uh, was complicit in the Bush uh, administration torture era from every uh, all the most objective pieces of evidence we have, who uh, was a prime architect of this administration's drone uh, policies, now head of the CIA, now is admitted to, to lying about the spying on the Senate committee. President Obama's asked about this. And in the first part of this answer, he's backing Brennan. Brennan stays. But then he gets to another part of his answer that has freaked out the right. So, but, but just bear in mind, before you hear this 30 seconds, Brennan stays. There's not going to be accountability for the CIA spying on the Senate. Let's hear President Obama's sound. Uh, I was very clear that uh, in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, uh, we did some things that were wrong. We did a whole lot of things that were right, but we tortured some folks. We did some things that were contrary to our values. I understand why it happened. Uh, okay, so look, President Obama right there, let's get the problem out of the way first. What are the first two things he did when he went into office? The kind of founding sins or mistakes of this administration was accountable, accountability-free uh, bailouts and propping of Wall Street a financial recovery that only fi focused on the financial sector, and then, in fact, ironically, how it would trickle down to the rest of the economy, not a bottom-up uh, fundamental bailout. The other major thing was we're just going to turn the page on torture, on Iraq, on all of these issues. We're going to turn the page, we're going to minimize certain things, and then initiate other problematic initiatives in terms of drones, assassinations, things like this. And he's right to say as bluntly as he did what happened. And I think President Obama, and I can already see the IMs coming, I think his opposition to torture is genuine. And I think there have been certain areas, as with Guantanamo, which he could do more and he should do more, but he's also been genuinely politically handicapped. But he showed again that when it comes to these issues, when it comes to spying on the United States Senate, his own appointee, John Brennan, is not going to have accountability. And that is the fundamental problem. Now, Republicans have another idea about what the fundamental problem is. And as you can imagine, their idea about what the fundamental problem is going to be crazy. Let's listen. Uh, I'm just going to read a few tweets. Amanda Carpenter is a right-wing journalist. Uh, speech writer and senior communications advisor to Ted Cruz. I am stunned our president just said, quote, we tortured people from the podium. This is a PR victory for our enemies. Make it stop. Make it stop. Every time presidents acknowledge an objective empirical reality, there is a small Al-Qaeda angel that is born in Afghanistan and unleashes itself. You know, our enemies and also just global public opinion generally, they weren't really sure about torture after they saw those pictures of naked pyramids and dead bodies coming out of uh, Abu Ghraib. They didn't really know about it. But with this press conference, it's been confirmed. 
That's one of the most moronic tweets I've ever seen in my life, but let's keep going. Daryl Issa, typical week in the Obama administration. Conservatives labeled a label conservatives labeled a holes, terrorists labeled folks. I would use folks and a holes interchangeably, and probably in both instances. All right, uh, Liz Cheney on Fox speaking to Monica Crowley, and this takes the cake. The failed Senate candidate of one of our most destructive and reckless vice presidents in history. Uh, his spawn still trying to create her own fear-based racket and career. This is Liz Cheney. You know, Monica, this president is an utter disgrace. He's got a situation where, as your last two reports showed, you've got a crisis erupting around the world. A fired-up Cheney complained. And back to the quote. And he is expecting more time, expending more time, more energy, more passion, more aggressive activity, Targeting and going after patriots, heroes, CIA officers, and others who kept us safe after 9-11. He's lying about what they did. He's slandering them. He went to Cairo and he did it in 2009, 2009. Today, he did it from the podium of the Oval Office. It's a disgrace. It's despicable. Liz, bravo. You have some of your father's flourish, but you need to work on the same kind of sinister pizzazz, that same cynical disingenuousness that propels everything he does, and you could catch up. Amanda Carpenter, uh, weak. Daryl Issa, I mean, that, that was just like pro pharma. I actually think, I wonder if Daryl Issa actually agrees with Obama because that tweet was so pathetic. So here's what we got. We got a president who's right but doesn't hold folks accountable. And then we have folks that are out of their fucking minds. We're going to make a brief change. Matt. Read an IM. I got to. What's the matter, Matt? The, what's going on? The internet, man. The internet's still down? Yeah. Just read IMs and let's see what's going on. So is the YouTube stream down? That's the thing I'm worried about. So just read IMs and I'll, I'm taking a look at it. All right. Uh... Teacher Lauren, you know what would be fun? Zephyr teach out on the Daily Show at Colbert. Think we can make that happen via Twitter storm? I think that's very possible. Go for it. Uh, Sugar High, I know claims of anti-Semitism are disingenuous, but how come no one pays, says criticism of Saudi Arabia's human rights violations or Islamophobia? Well, because in the same way that uh, criticizing Israel is not anti-Semitic, if you're criticizing Israel for the right reasons, uh, there are infinite numbers of grounds to criticize Saudi Arabia and their horrific, obscene human rights record uh, that have nothing to do with Islamophobia. They have to do with opposing uh, a monarchy that consistently uh, and systemically violates uh, human rights.